All right, so today we have a 19-inch G07 CBO that was brought down to me from uh, the arcade up in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Actually, the owner of that, Stephen, he brought down, I think, a dozen chassis for me to work on. He was coming down here for, uh, I forget, he came down to, it's been too long I've slept since then. He came down here to Wichita for some reason, and he when he came down to visit, he brought me about a dozen chassis that he's got up there that he needs worked on. I was like, well, okay, I'll take a look at him. So uh, the first two didn't really need much work, uh, not really video worthy. This is number three that I grabbed out of the box. And it was an all original G07, original flyback, original caps, all that. The, of course, the width coil was burned and broken and the top was off and the ferrite core was gone or graphite core, whatever you want to refer to it as, that was missing. So I put a new one of those in there. but. We also did a full cap kit, full reflow, and I've got a new flyback here from Peter. This is the uh, quote-unquote new design that I need to test. I thought, okay, this will be a perfect time to go ahead and test that, but that'll be done off camera. Uh, there, we all know how GL7 operates, and I've got a number of videos on these, so it's not going to be a big deal for that. The purpose of this video is to show you how to do a light bulb test and B-plus adjustment testing for the GL7, a dedicated video for just that. But I do want to do a little bit of review here. So uh, this thing had a blown fuse, F901 was blown, and a quick inspection showed that it had a number of caps that were basically exploded. These 250 volt 10 microfarad caps on the G07s like to fail in uh, extraordinary fashion, and this one is no exception, completely bad. And it was this one right here by the fuse. So I think when this cap went out, uh, this thing was running while this cap died and it took out the F901 and after going through here and doing the reflow and the testing and the uh, cap kit and all that jazz I went to do the light bulb test and it didn't work. I thought okay so I went back over the power supply and found X901 was shorted. Uh, if we go to the meter here and do, 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 diode mode if we go I believe this is the base, base two, I'm sorry, no, that's the, yeah, base two collector is fine, nope, sorry, base to collector is fine, but base to emitter, 32 ohms, 37 ohms on actual uh, ohm reading, so we had a shorted X901, and that was keeping the light bulb test from working, and that guy resides right here. So we had a, a bunch of bad caps that took out the fuse, which shorted X901, maybe not in that order, but that was all that was wrong with this. The uh, width coil needed replaced, the X901, and the F901, and the bad caps. So nothing really of too noteworthy to really do a video on that. I thought, well, since I've got this, I don't have a dedicated video on just the, the B-plus testing and the light bulb test. I thought, okay, let's do it on this one. So uh, step one. If you want to do if you want to do the light bulb test, if you want to do the light bulb test, easy for me to say on the G07, uh, the step number one is to well verify your fuses are good and all your components are intact. But you want to remove the two wires from the HOT. HOT is over here. You've got a yellow wire that connects to this pin here, and a brown wire. No, I'm sorry. The yellow wire connects to this pin right there, and the orange wire here connects to this pin here with the capacitor on it. You have to take those two wires off. As you see, those wires are off the HOT. That's step one. Step two, get yourself a 60 watt incandescent light bulb, which is a perfect analog for a picture tube CRT, I should say. Uh, so when you get this dialed into 120 on your B+, it should be 120 using the actual CRT. So 60 watt incandescent bulb, so you hook one lead to your frame there for the ground. Other lead you hook to the base of the HOT, so right there. There is a, on the frame of the HOT, that's where you hook your other lead. Right there, on that frame, like that. So, one lead on that frame, on the base, one lead on the ground here, or on the frame for the chassis. Then we'll grab our meter here, put it in volts DC, and we'll grab a couple other uh, alligator clips here, and again, negative lead on the frame.
and we'll put the negative up here kind of out of the way. Positive, you're going to go to the regulated side of the B plus resistor, which is the side with the white wire right there. So we go right there. And we want to hook our positive lead up to that. So we can go like so and get this up and out of the way. Make sure those aren't touching anything. There we go. So there's your setup. Now we give power to the chassis. There we are. And we are ready to power this up. So assuming your power supply is functional and everything is working uh, with the two wires off the HOT and everything hooked up properly, this prevents the high voltage section from powering up. So you won't have any flyback energization, nothing to really worry about. This will allow you to power this up on the bench and just simulate the CRT with the light bulb. So we're all set up, ready to go. So when I, when I turn this on, we should have 120 volts DC and our light bulb should light up. If it does not, then you've got an issue with either uh, the FR401, I believe, uh, or this 401. There's a 68 ohm resistor that can go out. There's this 220 ohm resistor. It's a fusible resistor that can go out. Uh, this one's, I believe, an, uh, this 68 ohm resistor is a fusible resistor. Uh, this 220 ohm resistor here is a fusible resistor. If either one of those are open, you won't have power. Make sure uh, you know your fuses are good. X901 can be open or shorted, I should say, like it was for me. So if you do this and it doesn't power up, you can have any of other a number of other problems. But that's not really the scope of this video we're just going to show you how to do this assuming your power supply is good okay with all that out of the way uh, here we go one two three there you go and we're a little high at 121.0 so you can actually turn your b plus pot you can see there there's 117 116 we'll go back the other way 17 18 19 20 120 point four perfect now get in the habit of wiping this B plus pot back and forth. So whenever I get one of these, I always take the B plus pot and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to kind of clean up some oxidation. You can also take some contact cleaner here and spray a little contact cleaner on it. It's non-conductive, so you don't really got to worry about it. Then you can just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Get in the habit of cleaning these B plus pots because they sit in one spot for so long they can develop oxidation and not be reliable. So there, now if I turn this back on, yeah, see, now we're 126, so let's go back the other way here. 120.5. Perfect. Not sure if you can see that, but there you go. So, we have a functional power supply on this GO7. Now I'm going to get it on a tube and do some adjustments, make sure this new, uh, new design flyback works, because Peter needs me to test that for him. Uh, and I thought this was the perfect opportunity. So don't forget to hook your wires back up to your HOT or it won't turn on for you. But that's about it. That's how you do B-plus testing and adjustment and the, and the light bulb test and everything on a GL7. So with all that done, there's one thing left to mention is that when you, when you power these up, uh, the filter cap, uh, when there's no load on the system, we just had a load on the system with the light bulb. So the light bulb will discharge the filter cap through the load on the on the circuit. But if you're testing this on a actual picture tube and you turn the chassis on or the monitor on and it doesn't turn on, when you pull this back off, this filter cap will zap the ever loving crap out of you. So you must manually discharge this filter cap on a G07 if it doesn't power on, or it will give you the shock of your life, possibly, you know, end your life. So you want to verify that that is discharged. Now we had a load on the circuit with the light bulb. So in essence, this is just like if I was to turn this on using a CRT and turn the CRT off, the filter cap will automatically discharge. But you always want to be safe and be careful. So we will take a screwdriver and manually discharge this filter cap. So if we look here, uh, here's our positive lead and here's our negative lead and we want to manually manually di I, manually discharge this I don't actually expect there to be any spark or anything because like I say we had the load on it with the light bulb but if you were to power this up without a load on it uh, or turn it on and it doesn't turn on this filter cap will need to be manually discharged or you'll get the shock of your life so if we go across the positive and negative lead here yeah nothing it's discharged as I expected because the light bulb did that but, you know, if you go to test this GO7 and it does not power up, you're going to want to manually discharge that. I keep saying it. I think it's the third or fourth time I've said that, but I want to make sure you understand that. That's, that'll be a bad situation if you touch that. That'll zap you pretty good. So anyway, there you go. So quick and easy. Um, hopefully you learned something. Uh, if you have a GO7 out there that you are having issues with and you don't know if it's a power supply problem or a horizontal output problem, this will help you uh, isolate whether you have a power supply problem or a horizontal output problem. So 
Uh, I babbled pretty good there. Sorry about that. But yeah, this this thing just had a bad fuse, bad caps, and a bad XO, uh, X901. And of course, I had to change this out. So I'm going to uh, put the cover back on the uh, area here. I'm going to hook it up to a tube and do all the normal testing. But that'll be not part of this video. So thanks very much. Hopefully, you learned something. Um, stay tuned for more. Like I say, I got uh, a dozen chassis delivered to me here by Steven. So any of them that uh, need, uh, or I should say any of them that are video worthy, I will make a video on. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned for the next video, whatever it ends up being. I appreciate it.